Today we're going to look at a very nice integral involving the log of the gamma function. This is called Rob's formula. So in particular, we'll evaluate the integral from a to a plus 1 of the log of gamma of x dx. So just to recall, the gamma function is defined in terms of the following integral. And this is true for almost all of the complex numbers. In fact, all of the complex numbers that are not non-positive integers. And then we've got this nice, like, maybe replication or maybe recursive formula for the gamma function that says gamma of z plus 1 is z times gamma of z. And then this nice reflective property of the gamma function as well. So log z times log 1 minus z is pi over sine pi z. And we're going to use these last two. This first one is just kind of like a recall. Okay, so let's get started. I've transposed my integral up here, and we're gonna start with a very simple change of variables. I'm just gonna do a shift where I replace x with x plus a, and what will that do? Well, it'll change my bounds of integration from a to a plus one to zero to one. So that'll be my first thing, and I think that's fairly straightforward. So that's what we'll do just kind of all at once. Now I'm going to take this integrand, this natural log of x plus a, and I'm going to write it as a function of y, which has been evaluated at two places. I like to think of this as like a zeroth integral. So in this case, I'll have the integral from 0 to 1, and then I'll have the natural log of gamma of x plus y evaluated from, well, let's look at the upper bound first. The upper bound will be y equals a. That makes sense because we have x plus a. And then the lower bound we want to put in there will be a bound that will give us 0. And what works here is to set y equal to 1 minus x. And then let's just recall that that's all within this integral. So let's talk through this lower bound. So if we evaluate this at y equals 1 minus x, we'll get the natural log of the gamma of 1. Well, I think that's pretty clear. But gamma of 1 is simply equal to 1. You can check that either with the formula or by other means. So this ends up being natural log of 1, which is well known to be 0. So that's not contributing anything here. But now, look at this. We've got a function evaluated between two points. And like I said before, I like to think about this as a zeroth integral. So I can take the derivative with respect to y and apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, changing that zeroth integral to a first integral. So here we'll have the integral from 0 to 1, and then the integral from 1 minus x up to a of, well, it'll be the derivative of this with respect to y. But instead of taking that derivative, I'm just going to write it down. So we have the partial with respect to y of the log of gamma of x plus y, and then dy dx. Now we're going to change the order of integration here. Really, I mean the order of the bounds of integration. And I think in order to do that, we need to get a nice picture of what's going on. So there's my x, y plane. So I think it's probably useful to put an x equals 1 into the picture. Let's maybe put this here. And then likewise, we'll need a y equals 1. Then notice this lower bound of integration is the curve y equals 1 minus x. So that's going to be the following line. So I think that's a good enough picture of that. And then the upper y bound of integration will be y equals a. So this might, in fact, be lower than 1, but I think it's just visually nicer to put it above 1. And then let's see, x is going from 0, so that's the y-axis, up to 1. So that'll be that vertical line. So boxing this off, we get that picture right here. Now I'm going to split this into two pieces. I'm going to split it into this upper rectangle, which I'll shade in blue, and then maybe this lower triangle which I'll shade in orange. Okay, good. And now next up, I'm gonna change the order of integration while splitting it up into two pieces based off of this split right here. But actually before we do that, I'm gonna make a nice observation here. And that is the partial with respect to y of this function is the same thing as the partial with respect to x of this function, just given the nice symmetry built into this function. 
So I can replace this with the partial with respect to x of the log of x plus y. And that'll be actually quite useful. Okay, so let's see our blue integral first. So that'll be the integral from one to a, and then the integral from zero to one of partial with respect to x of log of gamma of x plus y, and then dx dy. So there we've changed the bounds of integration as you know was our goal. Now let's see what we have for the other bit. So that'll give us the integral from zero to one, and then the integral from one minus y to one of the partial with respect to x of the log of gamma of x plus y, and then again, it'll be dx dy. So just as before, this will be that other thing. So the orange integral and the blue integral. So now we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to the inside, but this is quite easy because we've got a partial with respect to x in both cases. So this will give us the integral from one up to a. So that'll end up giving us the log of gamma of y plus one minus the log of the gamma of y dy. Okay, good. So again, that's just by applying FTC to that stuff in there. But next up, let's notice that we can use logarithm rules to turn this into the log of gamma of y plus one over gamma of y. And then apply our second rule over here to rewrite this as the log of y. So in fact, this first integral is simply the integral from one to a of the log of y dy. So let's keep that in mind. So let's see what we have for this second one. So we'll have the integral from zero to one of, well, let's see, it'll be the log of x plus y evaluated at one and one minus y. So that gives us the log of gamma of y plus one and then minus the log of gamma of one dy. But the log of gamma of one is zero just as it was before. And then we can break this log of gamma of y plus one into this bit right here. So let's do that off to the side. So this is gonna be log of y times gamma of y. But now we can apply logarithm rules to split that up. So that'll be, well, we've got the integral from zero to one of simply the log of y dy plus the integral from zero to one of the log of gamma of y dy, because the logarithm will turn a product into a sum. But finally, we can push these two integrals together into an integral from zero to a, and that's where we'll start the top of the next board. So this is where we ended up. I actually did something cheeky, and I split this integral from zero to one of log gamma of y into, well, a really two copies of half of that integral, but that's clearly the same thing. But that sets up our next trick, which will be to do a change of variables over here. So our change of variables will take y and replace it with one minus y. But that means that dy will be replaced with minus dy, zero will be replaced with one, and one will be replaced with zero. So let's see, that'll change the order of integration but then also pick up a minus sign. So the minus sign will change the order of integration back, meaning that all that changes is that this becomes a one minus y. Okay, and then we can start putting those things together. But before we do that, I'd like to also do a change of variables over here on this first integral. I'll take y and replace it with e to the x. So notice that means dy is e to the x dx. So let's see, that'll give us the integral of x times e to the x dx, just based off of everything. And then what about the bounds of integration? Well, as y approaches zero here, we'll have x approaching minus infinity, and then this will be the natural log of a. Okay, and then we'll have plus one half, the integral from zero to one of, so smushing these together, we have log of gamma of y plus log of gamma of one minus y. But we can turn a sum into a product again 
giving us log of gamma of y times gamma of one minus y. Good. And then next up, we'll take this product and use our reflection formula over here. So that allows us to write this as pi over sine of pi times z, which in turn, that quotient can be turned into a difference using logarithm rules once again. So this is the log of pi minus the log of sine of pi times, well, that should be y, so that was a bit of a mistake. So this z should be a y. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's expand everything out and see what happens. So we can easily take the antiderivative of x e to the x by using integration by parts, maybe tabular integration by parts if you like. That'll give us x e to the x minus e to the x. We're gonna evaluate that from minus infinity up to log a. And then we'll have plus one half times the integral from zero to one of log of pi dy minus the integral from zero to one of log of sine times pi y dy. But now we're gonna do a bit of a cheat. And well, I guess it's not so much of a cheat because we've done this integral on the channel before. This has a well-known value. And that special value is minus natural log of two. So like I said, you can check out previous video if you'd like to see that. Now we're ready for our final calculation. So plugging in natural log of a here will give us a times natural log of a minus natural log of a. Letting x approach in minus infinity will give us zero. And then we'll have plus one half. This first integral will give us natural log of pi. The second one in the end will give us plus natural log of two. But now we can smush those two together. After bringing all this down, we'll have plus one half times the natural log of two pi. And that's our final answer. So if you read this all the way from the left to the right, that's what you would maybe see as Rob's formula. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.